Hello everyone and welcome to some more F122 My Team. Here today for the British Grand Prix, my home race, the team's home race and very much a measuring stick to see just how we're looking in terms of performance. Now, if you're going to enjoy this one, leave a like and subscribe. Let's try and smash over a thousand likes. If you haven't seen the previous episode, check it out. Link in the top right because there are spoilers ahead. With that said though, we're going to jump into a Pirelli hot lap and we're going to do the average speed zone. Last time we done this was at Baku and we got a silver score. So hoping to do better here today. Now this was my best attempt. So we're going to have the average speed at the top of the screen. And we're going to try and beat it. We're driving the Aston Martin Vantage, which is the actual safety car in terms of the car model. So trying to get a feel for this as we make our way through cops now into maggots Beckett's and chapel definitely think i could have taken a bit more inside curb pretty much at every single apex especially this one right here at average speed they're just dropping underneath the 168 as we make our way onto the hangar straight now can we make the speed in time before we cross the gate i don't think we made it 167.8 so we just miss out by 0.3 kilometers which is literally nothing but that was my best attempt which means we're gonna get silver which is 500 extra acclaim and fifty thousand dollars so yeah there is confirmation of the final score as we now move into the actual event of the weekend the british grand prix of course which just happened in real life i want to mention really quickly in the background you can see here we had no weather forecast so all i had was to look at was this and you can see we've got rain for qualifying and mixed conditions for the race. So looks like I might have a sprinkle in the air, possibly British summer, of course, as we look at our current situation in regards to upgrades. So we're bottom again. We've got three on the way. Two of them are major. And you can see we are rock bottom easily as Williams brought a pretty big package this weekend along with McLaren as they take a step forward. And yeah, we're, we're slacking right now. We're struggling. Into Friday practice though, and we got straight back to it. And the first thing on the agenda was fuel management. We passed with flying colors, and the car actually felt really good in the dryer. I was actually starting to really get comfortable, and I had a decent setup on, and the car was, was running quite nicely and working quite well. Uh, you can see fuel management was pretty easy. We got purple and was able to be quite efficient on the fuel. We then move into the race strategy and again no dramas here easy targets to beat and uh, we're over a second up on our very last lap as we make our way up to the start finish and cross the line getting purple another practice program in the bag and you can see we're actually slightly higher on tire wear than what was projected so we're putting a bit more wear in the tires but the pace is nearly a second quicker so you know that's not a bad trade-off. A touch more tire wear for a second more pace. We then move into the qualifying performance test. And we were up by about a tenth. And we was holding on. But this is going to go down to the wire. Right down to the wire as we make our way to the final chicane. You can see how I missed my apex a little bit through the left. Which costs us a little bit. Through the exit we get a bit of oversteer. And we just miss out okay, by half a tenth. Which is quite unfortunate. We we're Unfortunately again. we're going to have to just you know, sack that one off and uh, move on basically. I'm not going to do the uh, quick practice just to get that. I'll only ever use quick practice if I need to kind of get at least two or more programs done because I'm really struggling for pace. So you can see here we scored 360 points out of 540. We did get all of the bonus points and discounts, which is good. So you're going to see those carry over to other upgrades. We scored about 500 R&D points after that practice session. And uh, you see all the discounts being applied now, mainly to durability parts, but still, we'll take a look at these at some point down the line once we've done some more performance related upgrades. And uh, yeah, claim wise, we got to level nine. So we're just one level away now from level 10, which would give us an extra sponsor. And that is when you really start to notice it. When you, once you get a primary sponsor and two secondary ones, that is when the cash flow starts to really turn and you can make a difference. So. Hopefully we can get that over the next event or so, this race and the next one. If that's the case, then the second half of the season could be much more promising. Also because we've got some major upgrades coming up, you know, for weight reduction, drag reduction, and it's going to help us a long, long way. So 
With that said, we're now in qualifying. First lap on the board, 138-1. Not exactly spectacular. Um, I definitely was struggling more in the wet compared to Canada last time out. I don't know what it is, but I just didn't quite have to balance all the confidence in the car underneath me. I was three turns up on my second lap, but Albon was pressuring me, so I decided to let him go. We then cooled off the tyres and went again, as you can see here, we're seven tenths up, so a pretty decent improvement here on our second time lap as we make our way into the Val chicane. A couple more corners to go as we try to get the lap time done. Up to the line we go, improving by nearly a second, and we dropped to a 37-1, however, we're still last. We then went back to the pits, put on a fresh set of tyres. I tried to put on a little bit more front wing, but it didn't really work. And I was running, you know, non-ERS at times and 50 off diff. And it wasn't really working like it was in Canada. Um, on that particular lap, I saw I wasn't going to improve. So I actually backed off and wanted to start a second lap. And we've still got time for one more if we need it. So making our way through the final corner now. We're going to start off a fresh lap and get to work. Straight away up on the delta, down to turn number one, down to seventh gear, but we just cut the apex a little bit too much. So I went for a cool off lap again, and we've got enough battery and fuel for one more lap. So let's get into it. Start the lap, first of all, getting a nice clean exit. Turn one, let's not cut the apex this time. Nicely done. Into turn two, trying to keep it nice and tight. Now turn three, brake just before the 50, down to fourth gear, have patience, get the rotation, and try to maintain a good minimum speed in this low speed section. We get an excellent turn four and a decent exit as well as we're attempting a bit up, nearly a tenth and a half up in sector one alone. Spot the 50, as your reference, down to fifth gear, then down to fourth, try to get a late second apex, and then bring the car back over to the right for Luffield. Didn't quite get all of the apex turn entry, but still, we're two and a half tenths up as we make our way onto the old pit straight. Prepare cops corner, looking for one downshift. Try and turn in just before the 50 or at the 50. Take loads of inside curb and then use all the exit curb as we just keep it within track limits. And now into Maggots, Beckett's and Chapel, trying to maintain a high corner speed through here at all times. A little bit wide of the apex there through the last one, but still a bit of oversteer on the exit. Definitely left a tenth on the table there. And now making our way down the hangar straight into Stowe. Down to sixth or fifth gear. Try to get the inside curb if you can to rotate the car. Easy on the exit to run wide, and that's exactly what we do. And we invalidate, and that is game over. That seals our fate. And you can see I'm not impressed. We're last again by 1.4 seconds over Paul Chair. It's a massive margin. I don't know what it was this qualifying, but in the wet compared to Canada, we didn't quite have the pace. Um, I felt much more comfortable in the dry. I would have actually preferred a dry session, to be honest with you. The car was working well in practice. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Either way, this is far from ideal, but we're starting our home Grand Prix from last place. We return once again then to the home of British motorsport and the birthplace of the Formula One World Championship. It's race day here at Silverstone and it's time for the British Grand Prix. Silverstone circuit then is 3.6 miles long, has a total of 18 corners and of course is no stranger to the rain. There won't be any DRS available in these conditions, but the Wellington and Hangar Straits are still good opportunities to tuck into the slipstream and make a pass. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and the smooth operator Carlos Sainz completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Russell, Sergio Perez and Norris, Mick Schumacher, Ricardo, Bottas and Kevin Magnussen, Verstappen, Fernando Alonso, Guan Yu Zhou and Fettel, Gasly, Ocon, Lance Stroll and Alex Albon. Sonoda, Latifi, Teo Porcher, and Martinez. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? 
Now this weekend hasn't gone how I hoped for, and this is also not part of the plan. The rain seems to be an issue for us around here. It wasn't a problem in Canada, but for this race it seems to be a problem, and the dry conditions actually seem to be better for us. Now then, this time we're on the extreme wets. We do have dry conditions forecast at the end. Usually when there's two icons, eight times out of ten you're usually going to be on the dry tire by the end of the race. So I'm expecting this rain to dry out relatively quickly. So a switch to inters could be pretty quick. I don't think it's going to take long, to be honest with you. Fuel-wise, I'm going to take a bit of a risk. We're going to go 0.8, or sorry, 0.2 under, uh, a little bit less. I think if I could start on inters, I would. And I, I do have the option. Do I feel like gambling? We're starting last, and looking at my qualifying pace, I was quite a way off. So do I fancy this gamble? Hmm. I think I might, you know, just for the sake of the video, I might give this a shot. I'm going to revert back to my dry setup as well. Uh, this sounds controversial, but the wet changes didn't work. So I might as well try and go for the dry because I know the car felt good in the dry conditions in practice. So in the dry, I was running 15. We, I'm going to go 16 for the race. Uh, diff will keep 55 on. Off diff will move back up to 55, which is what I was running in the dry. And then tire pressures... I'll go, I won't go minimum, which is what I was wanting in the dry. I'll go like two clicks. So we're kind of going down, but still keeping some pressure in there for the wet tire. So let's gamble, man. Intermediates will know straight away if I've messed this up or not. The rain's falling heavy, but usually you can drive into some heavy rain. So we may take some pain, but if it saves us a pit stop, you know, which the Silverstone pit lane is the longest one of the calendar, I think, then it could be a blessing in disguise. So leave a like if you're excited. And give me a comment down below your prediction. Will this gamble work? Yes or no? And then edit your comment after. Anyway, let's get into the action and let's see what happens. I'm struggling to keep tire temp. So this could be a new thing in the game where you try to gamble, but tire temps are harder to maintain if having to really work the tires to keep some tire temp alive. Now, I want to mention really quickly, those of you who are dedicated viewers might remember, about three weeks ago, we did this race on F1 2021 in my team. And we had a race where we started on the full wets, but I went to the Inters and ended up being the fastest car on track. The AI done the whole race on the full wets. So this game isn't vastly different to last year's game, which leads me to believe this could still be a thing in this year's game. My gut feeling says that could be a possibility. For now though, one thing I will say, like I said, is tire temp is an issue, which wasn't an issue last year's game. I'm struggling to maintain it. Kind of wish I'd kept my pressures a bit higher now seeing this. Hopefully once we're at full speed we can keep it up. But anyway, let's try and get her lined up and get a decent start. Just going to try and get a last bit of tire warm up going. Right, here we go. Nice. Perfect. Okay, hopefully the tires hold on. Hopefully this gamble pays off. Today is a day of gambling. Lights are out, away we go. Tires are stone cold. I'm going to keep an eye on this the whole way through. Right, let's try and stay alive this first part. It's definitely full wets at the moment, but it could swing our way. Let's be careful here. Visibility very, very poor, as you can see. Got the graphics pretty high, so the spray is an issue. But my tires are stone cold. I really wish I'd actually pump them up a little bit in hindsight. Oh dear, yeah, definitely wish to pump them up. There goes Paul Chair. We might be up against it here for the first few laps. Let's try and scrub these tyres up a little bit. Which ain't going to be easy because I can't just scrub the fronts because then the rear's going to come round. Hopefully by the end of the lap we'll have some temp. But look at this, we're icing around. Come on, come on, let's try and get the tyre temp going. My god, the back end. I don't mind cold fronts, it's the rears I've got to get warmed up. If we can get the rears nice and up to temp, then we'll be okay. We need to stay out, I mean the track's just going to come towards us eventually. The last sector on the last lap, sector 3, just felt a bit better. So um, things are just starting to improve a little bit. If I can keep working the tyres and keep the temp in, we're going to be okay. And we're starting to get some decent temp now, so it might take couple more laps but 
As long as we're not a pit stop window away, this could be still the right call. And it's starting to work a little bit now. Okay, we're starting to get towards the danger zone now of dropping out of the pit window. My DRS won't, my ERS won't turn off. It stayed on. Oh, fantastic. This bug or this issue still in the game? Not ideal. I have to be very careful on traction now. I can't turn my ERS off. <laughs> fantastic. That's not going to help my traction one bit. Oh my god, come on. Personal best, 49, but this is going to be an issue now. Just when I was starting to get some momentum. It seems like in this crimmer, whenever I get some momentum, something happens. If it's not a pit stop failure, it's an ERS failure. Ooh. Okay, slow down, slow down. Nice. Negative, which means you're going too fast. Reduce your pace. Okay, that's a result. So if your car deployed. There I say I might pit for a fresh set of inters and commit to the strategy. It makes sense. I'm not going to throw this away. You know, we've been trying to make it work. Let's hope that AI don't pit though. That's the key thing here. I'm not sure what the safety cars come out. Maybe too much rain. Possibly monsoon conditions. I mean, it doesn't feel that bad. I mean, I'm surviving on inters, but... Clearly, we're well off the pace. Still, we're going to box another set of inters. I'm committing to the strategy. The rain has just stopped right now. It's nowhere near as intense. So, I'm going to box now so I can get some tire temp. Okay, we can take you this lap. Rather than try to push this back as late as possible. Also because we might gain from this if I'm clever with it. So, we're going to box. I wouldn't say catch up now to the train, I don't think that's possible, but if I can get within the pit window, we could still gain a few places. So I'm relying on a quick stop here to hopefully help us out. We shouldn't go a lap down, that's for sure. So um, yeah, the safety car won't also be in this lap, but the rain has just turned itself down a little bit in terms of intensity. Another slow stop. At this rate, it seems like whenever you get purple, it just gives you a slow stop. I saw someone say that in a comment on my last episode. So from now on, we'll try and go for the green score, which is about 0.7, and uh, see if that works. Anyway, let's get back on the way. Now, worth noting, I'm about to set a personal best by quite a margin, I think. I've used no battery. I'm just trying to catch up to the AI, so I'm not even really pushing absolutely flat out. And the safety car has waited for me, but we set a 45.4, which is three seconds quicker. So the track is now intermediate and the AI haven't boxed for them. They're staying out in the full wet. So let's see if they pit as soon as the race gets back underway. Either way, we are in the prime position here to take full advantage and pick up the pieces here. Got a warning for track limits. I'm getting throttled again. I don't know what this is in the game. I hate it, this kind of traction control limiter thing they've got. We're just about going to catch up. Luckily, like I said, tyre compound is going to make a difference here. Gear shifts tend to break the uh, the limiter a little bit, but here we go. Race back underway. We're going to find out if we made the right choice. Made a mistake. After qualifying, the AI were a couple of seconds quicker than me, you know, in the work conditions anyway, so it still won't be easy, but... We've got a much better chance now. We got it wrong at first. We got bowed out by the safety car due to no retirement. Just, it looks like, too much rain. But now the track has dried. Okay, clear. And we're back underway. And we're getting dropped like a stone on the straights. But let's see what we're like through the corners as we start to push now on this tire a little bit. Seems like they are still fine. I did just get off with a tractor change back onto the wets. So the full wets maybe still work because they seem to be pretty strong so far, that AI. So no signs of weakness just yet. We're seeing at least 20 minutes of light rain. That's quite a long while, actually. We might finish the race on the intermediate, if that's the case. Unless the track dries all of a sudden. Got some battles up ahead. As, uh, we'll keep up with these guys for now. 39.9, 39.4 9 from Hamilton now. Pretty strong pace still, so... Yeah, we're still nowhere near that. Even though we're on the Inter, now is the right time for the Inter, not at the start of the race. I've got that wrong. 42-4. So we're much more on the pace. In hindsight, I should have started in the full wet and then switched to the Inter and the safety car. But still, the more you learn, it seems like this year, the way the tyres work in the wet is slightly different to last year's game. So fair enough. Lesson learned. 
my lack of wet weather running is showing in this game. Anyway, we're in the race now, so let's try and make some things happen. Oh, we've got a car in the pit lane. This poor chair. Damage, I think. I'll be surprised if it's for the Inters. We'll see, though, in a minute. Okay, Teo's in the pits. Teo in the pits. Another personal best of Ashley and Vettelin. Okay, the AI are going for the Inters, so this is it. The crossover phase has arrived. So we should be seeing all the AI in the pits over the next two laps for the intermediate tyres. There we go, nice and easy. Just got to get through on the corners because we can't do it on the straight. Not everyone is pitting, the Mercedes are staying out. Only one car in the pits is that. So the AI are still committing to the full wets it seems. Interesting now, this is a very split strategy choice. So the AI going in different directions and not all following when each other like sheep. But we set a 40.1, that is a pretty strong lap. Same move again, up the inside, snow just gets out of the way. Okay, this could be our race now. Let's see how this works out. Now we're seeing pit stops. Mercedes pit with Hamilton, okay. Russell stays out. Yep, I've got the soft tires ready to go, Elvis. Yes, yeah, so the secondary cars are staying out now, they're all gonna pit. 39.3, that's only half a second off the fastest lap, so we've got the pace at this stage of the race. This is it, Perez fastest lap, 36.9. We're still so slow, but we've got the strategy upper hand, so we can try to make it work as long as we can. And this is it, the remaining cars are in now for their inters. So we are going to take the lead of the British Grand Prix. My God, what a roller coaster from getting the strategy completely wrong with the Inters at the start of the race to getting a second chance for the safety car, the AI not taking it, and we take full advantage. Okay, we're approaching the pit window. You're going to be on softs. Well, yeah, I mean, we're going to pit in this pit window, but yeah, we are going to be on softs. 36 4 from Perez, so two seconds faster than us on that last lap. Got we'll to try and work on the pace now. The snap on 36 1. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm finding pace, but we're just three seconds a lap slower. It's time to get the elbows out. Perez, less than a second behind. This is it. Uh oh. Hamilton trying to get through in the S's. Perez made a mistake in the cops. Hamilton got by. Obviously, we know we're down on straight line speed. I'm also running out of battery, so I need to try and manage it if I can. I don't think we're going to win or get a podium, but if we can just score some points, I'd be happy. I want to try and delay the inevitable as long as possible, but it's not easy. Hamilton up down the outside. Just managed to get back in front there. Defensive driving, getting the elbows out. Don't care if it's Lewis or anyone. We've got to try and fight. Dry tyre could be the key point of this race where we might get a chance of salvation. making my car as wide as possible at all times as Perez gets back ahead of Hamilton. This isn't over yet. Here comes Checo, get a bit loose. Onto the back straight, we're gonna defend the inside completely. Do I have the cornering to stay ahead? Yes, I do. It's gonna be just a constant battle now as Ricardo and Russell join in as well for the fun. At the moment, the AI are pretty much knocking themselves out at times, so if we can just defend when we have to, the AI might help me in terms of taking time and places off themselves and give us a bit of breathing space. So it's not over yet, see Hamilton, they're making a mistake, inviting pressure from Checo, so as long as that keeps happening, we could be just fine, just trying to hang on to the car here. Whoa, what? Hamilton on the inside there. DRS now enabled. Do I pit for dryers? I've not been asked to do so. What do I do? <laughs> this is a, a key race decision. I'm making my car as wide as possible. Do I pit for dryers? Oh my god, look at the look at the stampede. I'm gonna box. Understood. Stopping this lap. I'm gonna take a chance. Oh yes, it might be the right call. Easy, easy, easy. 
Okay, never mind, they're all staying out. This might be the wrong call. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Normally when it's the ice enabled, it's time to pit for dryers. That's the, that's the logic I'm using here. I think I've gone too early though. Oh no, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Let's go for the green timing anyway. Please be the right call. So that is definitely the answer then. Green timing on the pit stop. I uh, don't know what to think about this. Cold tyres as well, this is going to be so painful. Look after these tyres now, we want to finish the race on this compound. Okay, it's just a million miles away actually. If we can just get the temp on the tyre, this could be fine. This is manageable. Just got to get the tyre warmed up. Come on, we can do this. The AI are not pitting by the way, I can see on the minimap they're staying out, so... Let's see, could this be a very interesting end to the race? Will the AR try to go to the end on Inters? And could we catch back up on drives if that's the case? Nope, poor chair pits. I hope it goes to drives if he does. We've got some tire temp now though. It's time to get these tires to work. It's right on the crossover, but I think this isn't a terrible decision. It all depends how much the track dries out. Hopefully, we've got sunshine on lap 26, that's all I hope for. Looks like Paul Chair's going for Inters again. Nope. Or oh, is he? Yeah, he is going for Inters again. So the AI don't think it's ready for dries. So Schumacher's flying behind me, catching me up so easily. Although he's just going off the track and making a mistake trying to go around my outside. But pace-wise, I'm not miles off my intermediate pace. I think I'm running like a few tenths off. I feel like I'm driving on, on the same inches as I was, and there we go. That was a full second off. Look at Schumacher, look at the closing speed. Just go. I'd rather not have that pressure behind me. I think this could work still, but we need the track to really dry now. Oh no. Just put an end to me already. God's sake. What a strange race. And that means grid penalty next race, most likely. And the AR pitting for dryers, I think. <laughs> Classic. They've done a brilliant job, I must say, under some intense pressure to take a well-earned victory here at the British Grand Prix. What do you think it was today, Ant, that gave them the edge over the competition? Well, keeping their tyre temperatures up in the tricky, wet conditions was really important. There's not much grip out there at the best of times, and it's ten times worse if you're out there on cold tyres. So the way they kept the rubber in its proper operating window was a huge advantage today. Well, Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Well, that is going to be the horror show of the British Grand Prix behind us, and I don't know how to feel, man. I'm really conflicted. Like, I got the original strategy wrong, so had the safety car not come out, we wouldn't have had a chance. So, you know, in that sense, I don't mind so much because I actually got it all wrong. But now I've got a better idea how the wet conditions handle, and you can definitely carry your tyres deeper into the stint. Even if the track's drying, the wets last longer, the inters last longer. So I've learned that lesson now, which is good. Hamilton, though, wins his home Grand Prix, his second race win of the season. Verstappen finishes his second ahead of Charles Leclerc, who recovers the third. George Russell P4 ahead of Lando Norris, so all three British drivers in the top five. 
Science P6 ahead of Ricardo, Vettel, Magnussen, Alonso. Missing out on the points, Zhou Guan Yu, Pierre Gasly, Nicolas Latifi, Lance Stroll, Esteban Ocon, Sergio Perez, Yuka Sinoda, Valtteri Bottas, Mick Schumacher, Teo Paul Chair, and then Alex Albon and myself out of the race. So yeah, not ideal. Standings wise, we're down to 14th as Ricardo overtakes us. So we're just hanging into the, the top 14 view. Sainz's lead is now cut to three points as Leclerc is on his rear end. So constructors, eighth place for us, still two points out of Alpha Tari, but Alfa Romeo, Alpine, McLaren all pull away and gain big points this weekend. So the battles for eighth between us, Alfa Tari, Aston Martin and Williams, unless things drastically change. So let's see what happens. Either way, it's game one in that championship. We're now going to move into upgrades though, so let's see if we can afford anything. Now we've got a few things to do. The next race though is in three days, so I don't think we're going to have any upgrades in the car. It's getting painful, man, having two races back to back and not having time to get upgrades on is really, really frustrating. But the next race is Austria and that's going to be a sprint race, I believe. Before we jump into that though, we've got a sponsorship renewal with Polar. We're one level off level 10, so I will just have a quick look to see if we can afford anything else, though I don't think we can. I'm going to try and go for this one, this thought. We get a slightly higher weekly income, only 3,000 more, but the goal bonus is nearly 30k more. Complete all the practice programs in a weekend. I'm assuming it counts, even if you were to quick sim them, so we'll go ahead and take that. Now, Distal is officially a new sponsor to the team, and we're going to look at the messages because we have a mechanical failure, of course, from the issue, and also ERS fall. So I believe we've got 320 for the pair. I don't think it's 320 times two. I think it's for the pair of them. Either way, we've got some points. So I'm very happy we've got 1,500 RD points and nearly $3 million. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. Now then, first things first is going to be G-Force training to keep Paul Chair nice and sharp heading into Austria. Upgrade wise, we have three upgrades in the way. So realistically, we can't invest in any performance upgrades that are not gonna be chassis because chassis is the only place we have level two fabrication. So we'll go for the monocoque structure for weight reduction. This is a big upgrade and that will give us a massive, massive boost. You can see that plus the weight redistribution upgrade, they're both major. It should push us above Alpha Tauri and get us off the bottom. So if these upgrades can arrive, that would be awesome. Now then, we've got the streamer suspension arm still 16 days away, and I can't buy anything else unless we get level two, so, um, or level, level one in this case. So I am gonna go ahead and this time get fabrication level one. I'm not going to waste any more time. We need to improve push forward. After this, we're going to go for build time level one and also on the chassis as well, build time level one. So we need to have $3 million to make that happen. But things are starting to move and progress. Nonetheless, guys, that is it from me this episode. We're back again in Austria. A sprint race coming up. Hopefully you enjoy. But yeah, if you enjoyed this race and the chaos, leave a like, subscribe for more. We're turning a corner. We're getting closer. Either way, as always, a massive shout out to the members for supporting the content. Finally, check out the two videos on screen if you haven't seen them. And yeah, guys, I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, take care and let's go back from me.